Let's now look at this question. Which of the following are not copper releasing IUDs? A. LNG 20, B. Copper T, C. Lippies loop, or D. Both A and C. Well, contraceptive methods or birth control methods are methods that are adapted by a couple to plan their pregnancy, either to delay a pregnancy, prevent an unwanted pregnancy, or even space between two pregnancies. There are different types of contraceptive methods. You have the natural methods, we have the barrier methods, we have chemical methods, we have implants and surgical methods. IUDs are nothing but intrauterine devices. That means these intra means inside uterine refers to the uterus. These are devices that are inserted into the cervical region towards the uterus of the woman, not by herself, by a medical practitioner like a doctor or an expert nurse. Now, these are some of the most commonly used contraceptives by several women in India. There are three types of IUDs. You have the non-medicated IUDs, that is Lippies Loop. Then you have copper releasing IUDs, such as Copper T, Copper 7, Multilow 375. And then we have the hormonal or the hormone releasing IUDs, such as the progestasat and LNG 20. Now, the copper releasing IUDs, what do they do? They release copper ions into the uterus. Now, what do these copper ions do? Well, the copper ions suppress the motility of sperm. See, sperms, once they are deposited into the reproductive tract, they swim towards the ovum, right? The secondary oocyte, which is released during ovulation, it swims towards this. Now, these ions, they suppress the motility of the sperms and also affects the fertilizing capacity of the sperms by certain changes. Thus, it prevents pregnancy. Now, what you see here are the different types of copper releasing IUDs. You have the copper T, the copper 7. Why do you think it's called copper T? Shape like the alphabet T. And then you have multi-load 375. So now, if you look at this question once again, which of the following are not copper releasing IUDs? The answer is both A and C because A is LNG 20. C is Lippies loop. So you're looking at only B, which is a copper releasing IUD. So you can eliminate A, B and C. D is the right answer because both A and C are the right answers. Now let's look at this fill in the blanks question. Intentional or voluntary termination of pregnancy or induced abortion, that is MTPs, medical termination of pregnancies, are performed all over the world, which accounts to dash of the total number of conceived pregnancies in a year. A, one-fifth, B, two-third, C, one-eighth, or D, one-fourth. Okay? Well, MTP is medical termination of pregnancy. Approximately 45 to 50 million medical termination of pregnancies are performed every year. Every year. Right? Okay? Across the world. And it accounts to one-fifth of the total number of conceived pregnancies in a year. Now, the government of India has legalized MTPs in the year 1971, but with a lot of strict restrictions because it has been misused and it is still misused by many. Right? So, if you look at these figures, can you see for every five women, one woman is undergoing MTP in a year. Okay. Now, MTPs are considered safe when, only when conducted in the first trimester within 12 weeks of the pregnancy. Because after that, it is not safe for the mother. So, it is not advisable after the first trimester because the risk factors are very high. So, now let's look at this question once again. Intentional or voluntary termination of pregnancy or induced abortion, that is MTPs, are performed all over the world, which accounts to dash one-fifth of the total number of conceived pregnancies in a year. So, the correct option is A, which has the answer. We can eliminate B, C and D. A is the right answer. 
a new question for you. Which among the following is not a natural method of contraception? A. Coitus interruptus. B. Periodic abstinence. C. Lactational amenorrhea. D. Vasectomy. Well, contraceptive methods or birth control methods are adapted by a couple to space their pregnancies or plan their pregnancy or even, you know, to avoid an unplanned, unwanted pregnancy, even to delay a pregnancy. There are different types of contraceptive methods. We have the natural methods, we have the barrier methods, the chemical methods, the implants and the surgical methods. What is not a natural method among the options that you have studied is vasectomy. Now, this is a surgical method. Now, this procedure is done in males. It is a minor surgery where the vas deferens, can you see that? It's the accessory duct, one of the accessory ducts in the male reproductive system. This vas deferens is tied and cut. So, what happens is that the sperms do not reach the urethra. Right. So this is a surgical method and it is not a natural method. Now, what is a natural method of contraception? Well, this is based on the principle of preventing the ovum from meeting the sperm. But there's no usage of external devices or creams, jellies, chemicals or, you know, no surgical methods here. It's all on the sexual practices or the natural cycles that's happening in the body. There are three categories under this. You have the periodic abstinence, also called as a rhythm method. Coitus interruptus, also called as withdrawal method. Lactational amenorrhea during the parturition period, just during the lactation period, just after parturition. Now, these methods are good, but chances of failure are very high. That means risk of getting pregnant is very high. What is periodic abstinence? Now, periodic abstinence, which is also called as a rhythm method, is based on the certain number of days in a 28-day menstrual cycle, which is considered as a fertile period. See, now let's say a menstrual cycle, which is of 28 days, that's a normal cycle. Day 10 to day 17 is considered the fertile period because around the 14th day is when ovulation takes place. And we know that the ovum has a viability of one day and the sperms have a viability of about three to five days. So day 10 to day 17 are considered the danger period or the fertile period because if a couple engages sexual intercourse or coitus without any protection, chances of getting pregnant is very high. Okay, so this is called as periodic abstinence, abstaining from unprotected sex during the fertile period. Second is coitus interruptus, also called as withdrawal method. This is a method where the male partner, just before ejaculation, he withdraws his penis from the reproductive tract of the female, thus preventing the deposition of sperms into the reproductive tract. What happens here? When there are no sperms, that means there is no fertilization. Okay, again, it is a the chances of failure are there even in this because you just need one sperm for fertilization. Then lactational amenorrhea. See, just after parturition, when a woman is intensely breastfeeding or intensely lactating, hormonal changes in the body, you know, due to the suckling action of the uh, baby, hormonal changes takes place within the body, which causes ovulation not taking place. That means there's no ovulation. When there's no ovulation, there's no menstrual cycle. This can last up to a period of about six months, but then you cannot predict when ovulation will start and so pregnancy can take place if there is unprotected sex. But this is a natural method. In fact, this is also called as postpartum infertility. So, Elevated prolactin levels and a reduction in the gonadotropin releasing hormones, GnRH hormone during lactation is what is suppressing the ovulation. So now let's look at this question once again. Which among the following is not a natural method of contraception? It is D, vasectomy, whereas all the others are natural methods. So we eliminate A, B and C. D is the right answer. A new question for you. 
in which of the following situations are MTPs usually performed? MTPs as in medical termination of pregnancies. A. Pregnancy due to casual unprotected intercourse. B. Failure of the contraceptive used during coitus. C. Continuation of the pregnancy could be harmful either to the mother or to the fetus or to both. D. All of the above. Well, MTP or medical termination of pregnancy, nothing but induced abortion, is an intentional uh, removal or rather termination of the pregnancy. Now, this is to get rid of unwanted pregnancies which can be due to unprotected coitus or intercourse, failure of the contraceptive methods that are used or pregnancy due to rapes. Sometimes a pregnancy could be harmful or fatal for the fetus or for the mother or sometimes even both. In such cases, induced abortion or medical termination of pregnancy is advised and it is done by a medical expert like a doctor. Okay, And it is normally done within the first 12 weeks, that is within the first trimester of pregnancy. So let's look at the question once again. In which of the following situations are MTPs usually performed? The answer is D, all of the above, because it is performed when pregnancy is due to an uh, casual unprotected intercourse or failure of contraceptive methods or the pregnancy can be harmful for the fetus or the mother or both, right? So the right option is D. We can eliminate A, B and C. D is the right answer. A new question for you. Emergency contraceptives are effective if used within A. 72 hours of coitus B. 72 hours of ovulation C. 72 hours of menstruation D. 72 hours of implantation Emergency contraceptives are used after unprotected intercourse or unprotected coitus within a certain time frame, within a certain time period to avoid pregnancy. Now you have hormonal and non-hormonal pills. Hormonal pills have the hormone called levonorgestrel. Non-hormonal pills have a non-hormonal drug called as ulipristal. Now these interfere with the natural hormones that are produced which are needed for conception. But then these pills are effective only if it is taken within the 72 hours of unprotected coitus because after that, you know, a delay in taking these uh, pills is of you know, it's not as effective as it should be and chances of conception become high. Now, emergency contraceptives are not directly, you know, they do not have a direct effect on menstruation. Now, during the bleeding phase or the menstrual phase, there's no ovulation taking place. So, emergency contraceptives have no play during menses. And ovulation, as we know, is the release of a secondary oocyte from a mature graphian follicle. It does not mean that every time ovulation takes place, there is pregnancy that is going to take place. So taking an emergency contraceptive within 72 hours of ovulation is of no use. Now, suppose pregnancy occurs, fertilization has taken place and implantation of the blastocyst has taken place onto the endometrium of the uterus. These emergency contraceptives do not induce abortion because Pregnancy has already been established. So it's of no use taking these emergency pills within the first 72 hours because implantation takes place much after that. Okay, so let's look at the question once again. Emergency contraceptives are effective if used within 72 hours of coitus. So A is the right answer. You can eliminate B, C and D. A is the right answer.